uh, it's nice to have you again on this exciting moment. I hope you enjoyed the uh, previous episodes of Bliss Talk on the Backstage Story Show on Nollywood Radio France. And uh, uh, on Bliss Talk, we will discuss the various facets of marriage and how to maintain an endless marital bliss. And with me on Bliss Talk on the Backstage Story Show on Nollywood Radio France, I have my regular special guest who is a, a notable face in, the, in this uh, area. She will explore and expound on several issues. We've been doing that and this episode promises to be very exciting. Don't go anywhere. Still stay. Let's, let's listen to more of Brenda Anthony Jacob and I'll be right back. You're still tuned to Bliss Talk on the Backstage Story Show on Nollywood Radio France. Uh, according to Dr. Phil, if you plan on sticking with your spouse, then you are also stuck with your in-laws. Uh, he also says that you've got a finite amount of physical and emotional energy. If your in-laws are draining you, you may need to change the boundaries. Reassure them that you are not closing them out. You are simply focusing on yourselves. And on that note, I welcome you again to Bliss Talk. And on Bliss Talk today, we will be talking about in-laws in marriage, how to love your spouse and his mother. The mother-in-law game. So this episode is a, it's like a, it's a bumper pack. Uh, we're, we're going to be talking about in-laws in marriage. We're talking about how to love your spouse and his mother. So the mother-in-law game. And with me on the show, as a regular, as we have been, I have the marriage counsellor herself here, Dr. Mrs. Tonia Smart. Tonia, nice to have you on the show again. Thank you, Demola. It's my pleasure to be here once again. How are you doing? Very well, thank you. And Tonia is looking very elegant today. Oh, I wish we you. could. <laughs> All right, this is uh, Bliss Talk, and today on Bliss Talk, in-laws. Tonya, let's start from this, from the, from the, from the ab initio. Who are in-laws? Let Let's start from there. Well, your in-laws are the family members, both immediate and extended, of your spouse. So, if you're a husband, your wife, family members, the brothers, the sisters, the father, the mother, the cousins, they are all your in-laws and also um, vice versa. So your in-laws are the people you have spent your life with growing up mm. and you're now married. So they now become part of the extension of your families. So mm. those are the people that the in-laws all right. represent. In defining in-laws, we have brother-in-law, sister-in-laws. Do we have uncle-in-laws and auntie-in-laws too? Oh, yes, we do. We have cousins-in-laws <laughs> as well. Um, because in Africa, we run an extended, very extended, let me say, okay. um, family structure. So we're not, we're not like the um, Western people. It's just your brothers, your sisters, your mom and your dad. Here mm. we have cousins up to the second cousins, third cousins, fourth cousins, you know, and on and on like that, as long as you can trace a link. And if you remember again in Africa, everybody is even an in-law because even just the people you have spent your life growing up with, they're more like family. So mm. they're really like very close to you. But your in-laws are actually your biological um, relations, you mm -hmm. know, that you from, know. From, from, the, from the husband or the wife's party, side. Yes, either party, yes. Okay. Now, let's talk about the key roles. We know who the in-laws are. Okay. What are their major roles in a marriage? Well, basically, they are supposed to support the family, but the support should not be the type that would, you know, lead to them enforcing their rights or their views or their opinions on the family. So it's a supportive role to help, to give information, to give advice, but not lording it over the couple because the couple, too, are independent entities as well. Okay. Uh, still talking about the role of in-laws. In this part of the world, it's not common in um, in Western world where you have a lot of encroachment, in-laws and encroachment on the peace of a marriage, their role in terms of the peace of a marriage. What do you have to say? Well, Demola, let me take you back to the um, edition we had previously when we're talking about roles and responsibilities. And part of what I said in courtship, because I kept emphasizing courtship then, that you must be able to settle some of these things before you actually get married. In this part of the country, in Africa generally, you have family members, especially from the man's family, come to stay with the couple. So before you get married, you need to agree all of those things. Are family members going to stay? Which of them is going to stay? Do they, are they going to stay for a long time? Are you going to train them? So you need to agree on all those things because that way you come with your mind prepared for what you're going to see. You can never be too prepared, but at least you'll be prepared 
to an extent, mm. yes. Okay. All right. Now, um, we've talked about in-laws. We've talked about who the in-laws are and their roles. Now, let's zero in on mother-in-law because in this part of the world, mother-in-laws are the bane. They are the bone of contention in every marriage. We, have, we don't usually have issues with father-in-laws, mother-in-laws. What is the extent of a mother's, mother-in-law's participation in a new couple's life? Well, the truth is, you've said it really, father-in-laws are not really any much of a problem, even though some of them can also have <laughs> their own, because everybody, you know, have their own um, ups and downs. But basically, the Bible says that a man would leave his father mm. and his mother and cleave to his wife, and they too will become one, one flesh. flesh. But what you see is that the man leaves his father, takes along his mother, <laughs> cleaves to his wife, and then you want three people to become one flesh. Mm. But the way I can answer that is going back to my foundation, which is chemistry. Okay. In chemistry, we talk about bonding. And there are two basic types of bonding. You have the ionic bond, which is very, very strong. Mm. And then you have the Taking covalent. Back to class now. <laughs> yes, you have the covalent bond, which is not so strong. All right. And so I want to look at the relationship between a man and his mother as an ionic bond, mm. while the relationship between himself and his father is a covalent bond. Mm. So it's easy for him not to see father for <laughs> some time, but it's more difficult for him not to see mm. mother mm. for some, for some time. time. And you know, in similarities, they say opposites attract. Yeah. So mothers tend to spend more time or love their sons more. And just like fathers are very protective about their daughters. Hmm. So if you are a son coming to take the daughter, you have the father to contend with because he doesn't want his daughter to be unhappy in marriage. Hmm. And so if you are the husband, the mother-in-law doesn't want her son, you know, <laughs> not to be cared for. Hmm. Because when you really look at it, a woman has cared for her child and particularly the son mm-hmm. for so long and just giving it up for, let me say in quotes, a strange woman, a strange woman, you know, it will be like she's taking everything from me. Okay. So it's easier for the couple to understand that the mother-in-law is not an enemy, mm-hmm. but rather she is a friend. Mm-hmm. So if, like you did say in your opening quote, if you've planned to get married, in-laws are part of the hand luggage you need to take along with you. <laughs> hand luggage. So you cannot board that flight with your clothes and your shoes and your bag not going with you. So you need to understand that, yes, they would come and they would go. And particularly for the mother-in-laws, like I said, men are always very particular about their mother. So if you love your husband, the simple thing is, overlove your mother-in-law. If there's something like that, Demola, <laughs> overlove <laughs> her, overlove her, spoil her with love, make her feel she's special. All right. And it takes me to what I call the mother-in-law game. game. And I'll tell you how that game goes. Before you go like, into that game, uh, just in case you're just joining us, this is Blitz Talk on the Backstage Story Show on Nollywood Radio France. And you have been listening to Dr. Mrs. Tonya Smart and you've heard a lot of chemistry from her. Just in case you don't know her profile, she studied chemistry at the University of Lagos. Uh, she, and she also had a master's in chemistry. So that's the reason for her uh, quotations from chemistry. She, she's now af- applying chemistry to relationships as a marriage counselor she 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 has a very wonderful resume which i have spoken about in the previous episode and she we've been talking about bliss talk and this topic particularly this topic in africa is a serious topic of discourse and a lot of families have a lot of marriages have collapsed because of mismanagement of in-laws that's why we're talking about in-laws today don't go anywhere let's listen to lamborghini sabi sabi before we go on to the next topic of discourse. You're still tuned to Bliss Talk on the Backstage Story Show on Nollywood Radio France. Tonya, let's go on. You are, you are saying something. Yes, Emma, I was going to make you understand how my mother-in-law game works because a lot of people have asked me, we keep talking about the mother-in-law game. Why the word game? I said, well, a game is something you enjoy doing. If you're a sportsman, you love to play tennis. So tennis for you is both sport and game and you enjoy mm. it. Why? Because you look forward to having your partners you look forward to being on the court to play and all of that Mm -hmm. so also for your mother-in-law you must look forward to pleasing her because when you please your mother-in-law your husband is going to be well pleased with you Mm. 
And so how does this game work? Very simple. If you have your mother-in-law staying with you, you know that your husband likes everything well for his mom. So the game goes like this. You make sure that your mother-in-law is well fed and you give all, her the all best overfed. Yes, yes. <laughs> and you give her the best food. Okay. The best the best yes, food. Yes, the best now, food. Now before you go into that, the best food definition to to a mother-in-law may be very very you know, may be very critical because sometimes what you think is the best the mother-in-law may not accept as the best. Well, the mother, that's the game we are coming into. If, for instance, your husband doesn't like Eba, okay, and his mom loves Eba, hmm. you would say to your husband, my darling, mama would like to eat Eba. If it's a guy who really loves his mother, he's going to say, okay, I will manage it if that's what mama wants to eat. Because one, he won't want to stress you to make two, three so, different okay. meals. Yes. So he will understand. If he doesn't like egusi, and mama says, oh, it's egusi that I've not eaten in a long time, you know. I say, ah, mama says we will eat egusi. Say, eh, okay. As long as his mama says that's the game, mm-hmm. the husband will say, okay. Mm. He can finish that meal and ask for a snack afterwards, mm-hmm. but he won't tell you no. no. Okay. Give mama something else. Why? Because he loves his mother. Mm. So the game is managing what mama loves, what your husband loves, mm. making sure that your relationship between yourself as the wife and herself is cordial. And then you're getting a win-win situation because your husband is happy with you. You're happy with your mother-in-law and he can see that the relationship is blossoming. Hmm. At the end of the day, you are able to like give in to a lot of things because why? There is nothing that you don't work at. It's not overnight. Hmm. Some people say, my mother-in-law, you don't understand. I said, well, the first thing is if you can't, Curtail a mad person, you can curtail anybody. It all takes what love and affection. No matter how bad a person is, if you show the person love, if you show the person affection, if you show the person care, the person definitely at some point in time will succumb and you win the person over. So mm. that's how the game goes. Mm. That's the game, the mother in law game. Mm. Anyway, <laughs> we're still talking. Now, the. Um, what should be the duty limits of a mother-in-law in a marriage, in a new couple's marriage? What should be the duty? The duty limits. You know, a, a, a mother comes in with, with the husband and then she must have limits so that she doesn't encroach on the, on the wife's um, responsibilities at home. Well, first, like I keep saying, all of this or most of this should have been agreed upon. If from the one... Your mother-in-law from the one might not even say she's going to come and stay with you. So you might even have some few years of relief, so to speak. That's if she doesn't. And, (laughs) you know, maybe mama is not feeling too fine after some years. And say, okay, well, uh, mama, come and stay with us and all of that. Mm -hmm. And, you know, in the African setting, when a man has a baby or um, child, the first person that comes calling is his mother, not your own mother if you have um, your own mom. Mm. Because why, you know, respect is that the man's mother comes first to look after the baby and then your own um, mother can come um, later because, of course, this the child belongs to the son mm-hmm. and the son belongs to the mother and the family. <laughs> so, you know, it's, it's taken like that. Okay. So if she comes to stay, there's really no setting of rules because when you begin to set rules, you begin to make unnecessary boundaries. First... If you're from different cultures, like I'm married into different cultures, and the first thing I learned to do was to cook my husband's native food, apart from the general Yoruba food. And where did I learn that from? I learned it from his mother. Mm. Because the way she cooks it, now when I cook their own native soup, I cook it even better. Mm. Because now I'm adding all the other skills and everything, you know, in my cooking um, skills. So the first thing she wants to be sure that her son is eating good food. And that's why I kept saying you need to invest in your cooking skills. If you don't have it, you need to go study for it. Wow. If she says that her son is well fed, you maintain oh, the home <laughs> very well. You know, the home is clean, is neat and tidy. Okay. You give her some peace of mind. At least this person that my son has brought in as a wife knows how to, you know, look after him and look after the home. Yeah. That is number one victory. Yeah. Next, you need to let her know that you are open to her. Spend time with her. Sit down with her. There are some times when I say something to my husband, he's like, I know you must have been talking to mama because there's no other person that would tell me. So I know a lot about the family history. I know a lot about his growing up. From where? From a mother's perspective. And like I said, sometimes I'm amazed all the things she would tell me that I'm like, oh, she can tell me because why? She feels I'm more like a daughter and not a daughter-in-law. 
So you need to build that relationship. It didn't start overnight. You will need to take one day at a time. But first, she must be able to trust you. Okay. And then next, she must be able to know that this person has my son's interest at mm. heart. Hmm. All right. This is still Bliss Talk on the Backstage Story Show on Nollywood Radio France. And uh, you've been listening to the voice of Dr. Mrs. Tonya Smart. And uh, you need to know that she's a, she's a chemistry. She's grounded in chemistry and she's applying the knowledge of chemistry to marriages so that there will be proper chemical reactions so that there will be, there will be no explosion. Uh, now, let's talk about stubborn mother-in-law. So mother-in-laws can be very cantankerous. Why? Because probably they did not like the um, spouse from the beginning. And the boy, the son eventually married that girl into that house. Now, what they want to do, they have someone else pictured in their mind that they want, they feel their son should marry. There's a problem. And the, 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 the boy or the son is attached to mommy's apron strings. How will the couple manage, or particularly the husband, how is he going to manage between the mother-in-law and, and, and the wife in that situation? That, that is the easiest situation for me, Demola. Wow. And that is really the truth. It's easiest because first that he disobeyed his mom or he did not succumb to his mom's wishes to marry whoever she had in mind means there is something about you that is very fundamental to him. Okay. And for me, that is the winning streak for any game in mm. marriage. That is the winning that he can leave every other thing and say, this is the person I want to spend my time with. Next is for you to now appreciate when you know that this man is going to stand by me and overflowing love in his path. And like I say, if you love him, his mom will want the best. There is no mother that doesn't want the best for any child, now whether male or female. Mm. But like I keep saying, more because of the mother-son relationship. Okay. So if she sees that, oh, all her fears, because most of the time when such issues are, is that she's afraid that maybe this person is going to you know, overshadow me. Okay. And like I said, once you're able to make her trust you, love her, make sure that she has what she desires within, you know, your own abilities. And she says that you're really taking care of her son. Mm. Gradually, those fears would give way. Her mm. son comes home. She sees that the home is happy, it's peaceful. So there's really nothing for her to worry. But when she sees that, oh, this person does not, you know, give my son peace of mind, that's when she's going to go, you know, the other way. Mm. So that's what they're really looking out for. Somebody who is going to care for my son as much as I've cared for him. Let me make you laugh. You know, over the weekend, I was discussing with some friends and they were like, in-laws, what do you really expect from them? I'm like, you don't expect anything. Because just like you have every individual have their good, they have the bad, they have the ugly. But the major thing is that you focus more on the good and let it cover the bad and the ugly. So... At the end of the day, your mother-in-law is not your enemy. Mm. And once you understand that, she's here because she has an interest to protect. And like every mother would also one day want to become a mother-in-law. So if you don't take care of your mother-in-law, you want somebody else to take care of you. And you know what is fair is fair. So you take care of your mother-in-law and pray that somebody else will take care of you. All right, you've been listening to Dr. Tony Smart. On the on Bliss Talk on the Backstage Story Show on Nollywood Radio France. Before we continue, let's listen to Adi 2 by Samuel Jegede and we will be right back. This is still Bliss Talk and I've been with Tonya Smart. It's it's uh, it's quite interesting. This particular topic is uh, is uh, is it, we can't we can't exhaust this. No, we, we can't, can't exhaust this. We, we can't, can't. Exhaust. Now th there's this question. There's a school of thought that that believe some mothers actually advise their sons that. Um, or their daughters that don't marry any guy that is um, attached to the apron string, any mommy's boy that won't take responsibility, that won't take his foot and say, this is what I want, this is my home. Don't marry that kind of person. Marry a guy that, because some, some men, are because they are so fond of their mom, any issue that comes up between the couple, they take it out and then report to the mom. What do you have to say about this? Does well, it mean the, the man is not matured enough to be married or what? The man is very mature, Demola, and Luckily, I'm married to a mommy's boy. <laughs> Luckily, and, and I and I'm with all sense of pride, I'm married to a mommy's boy. In mm -hmm. my um, in-law side, everybody knows that my husband is mama's favorite. So, okay. 
my mom has been with us for as many years as I can think of. Wow. If, if she goes to any of the other um, places, she's like, I want to come back to Tonya's place. I want to go back and see um, Tonya, you know. Why? Because there is peace. Mm. And she says that I'm looking after her son and her son is happy. And so she's happy with me. Mm. And she's happier with me because I make out time to spend with her. I make out time to talk with her. Okay. Mama is 84. Wow. And, you know, every time she sees me, she's like, I'm happy my son married you. Mm. And for me, I think that is, I'm done. I've done a good work. Wow, like Paul I'm clapping say. for you. <laughs> <laughs> and You've and done I'm excited. A good job, yes. but you're excited. And because you, you would want to marry your husband again. If you I would, I would, definitely. <laughs> I would. All right, this is Bliss Talk on the Backstage Story Show on Nollywood Radio France. This episode, wow, it's exciting. It's like, it's, we can't exhaust it in one, but... Uh, before we go further, let 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 me ask you to to drop your lines so that people can actually call in once they listen. They want to call. They want to. A lot of people have issues with their in laws, and it's quite um, it's quite uh, disturbing how in laws in laws issue in marriage is uh, disrupting a lot of marriages and causing divorces. Now let's have your email and your number for for people that would like to call later. Well, if you like to call me, you can reach me on two three four eight one six six five four. Six two three one. That's two three four Nigeria. Eight one six six five four six two three one. And my email is Tonya dot smart at York City Ltd dot com. Tonya dot smart at York City Ltd dot com. All right, so that is listening. And, you and know, to get, get uh, feedback. Back. All right, that's yes. Tonya Smart. And if you want to reach me on the email, demola.sonyaolu at gmail.com. Or you can call me on 234-809-872-6926. 234-809-872-6926. Now, let's go to this question. Marriage responsibility first or in-laws responsibility first? Some people marry and the, the family of the wife move in with them they don't consider the space of time that they should spend together now the husband is caught between satisfying the home and satisfying the in-laws what do you have to say you must strike a balance every wise man must learn to strike the balance your family is your first priority hmm. at any point in time you cannot feed others and your family is going hungry so your family is your first priority but you must learn to balance. Your family can make sacrifices. Don't get me wrong when okay. I talk of priority. Yes, you can give up some, some luxuries. Let me put it like that. So that, you know, you can um, reach out to your in-laws. But at the same time, you don't, um, you know, cut your nose to spite your face. So okay. you must strike a balance. You must strike a balance. Right. In-laws will make demands, yes. But you must know where to, you know, start the demands and end the demands. And your family should not suffer while you're trying to meet up to their demands. All right, striking that balance, I'll, I'll pick you up from there again. Striking that balance, this relationship is fresh. We're just getting to meet each other and we want to spend, it's not courtship because we were not living together during courtship. Now we're spending quality time together just to understand each other. And then we have third party. And you said uh, three is awesome. Yes, three is awesome. <laughs> but but what, what in, in, this, in this context, you know, in African context, if husband and wife do not have time to study and understand each other, and then there's this burden of, of family and in-laws responsibility. You think the man won't, won't get to his limits? You think he won't want to seek for, for rest or something elsewhere? First and foremost, marriage is a lifetime period of learning. I have been married for, like I said, over two decades. This is 21 years coming in now. And I've not had, from day one, I've been married with my husband and family and friends, so I've never really had the husband, wife, only you kind of um, stuff, really. Mm. If you have it, like I said, it's beautiful. It's a good time to enjoy yourselves, get to know one another. But the learning is a continuous thing. So it's not whether there is a third party. My take is that as long as the other parties understand their rules, okay. meet with the rules and regulations that you both have set and work within those rules, then there wouldn't be any friction. And... All of that boils down to how the woman handles the home. I was just saying to a friend this morning that it's very vital for a woman to secure her home. Secure her home in the terms of make sure that everybody is in harmony. Because if whether it's your in-laws or your own siblings, they must show basic things like respect, okay. 
courtesy and, you know, make sure that the home is neat and tidy. Mm. So when all of that is done, give and take, there will be human differences, but it must be differences that can be managed and not escalated. Mm. So if the home is peaceful, the husband will be happy to come home. You also will be happy, you know, to have him at home. And once your in-laws or your siblings, they see that the home is quiet, then they would, you know, fall in line and do the things that they need to do. Hmm. All right. Uh, this is still Blitz Talk on the Backstage Story Show on Nollywood Radio France. I will be talking about in-laws in marriage and how to love your spouse and his mother. That's the mother-in-law game. And uh, uh, to, to, to expound on this topic has been Dr. Tonya Smart. She's been expounding and with, with, I, can't, I can't imagine how much information database she has. Now, there's this popular saying that the other woman in every man's life is his mother. If your husband starts in with, well, my mother does it this way or that way, then tell him to go over and sleep with her. That's Dr. Phil. <laughs> that, what, what amount of information should a couple allow their in-laws to have? What's the information limit that should spread over to in-laws? Well, basically, the information is as much as you want to give and you need to manage information very well. Um, like I just said to you, I said I spent time with my mother-in-law and I know more about my husband's background that even I'm sure he would know. I can I can recite his father's siblings. I can recite his mother's siblings. I'm sure he wouldn't even know the order. If he remembers, I would probably remember more accurately, mm. you know. And because, like I said, everything you need to work at. Mm. If you're in primary school and they give you A-level biology, you're not going to pass. Why? Because you've not reached that level. Mm. So you must work each day for what it presents. And that's why I said marriage is a continuous process. You can't learn everything saying I'm staying with my husband. You can stay together for the next two years. It doesn't mean you know more than somebody who is staying with the in-laws. Why? Because you can even be together and you're just sitting down and you're not even communicating. Mm. So it's not the time you spend together, but it's how well you utilize that period that you're together that, you know, is really, really important all right uh, this is um one of dr phil's advice he says if a wife has a problem with her mother-in-law it's the husband who needs to step in and help fix it likewise if a husband doesn't see eye to eye with his in-laws his wife needs to step in the person with the primary relationship that's the son or the daughter not the in-law needs to be the messenger now uh, settling rifts between uh, a mother-in-law and and the and the and the and the wife or a, a mother-in-law and the son should it be resolved by the other person? Yes, yeah, because you know your you know your other party very well. The man knows his mother very well, and just like you know, you want to be sure that you know you're doing the right thing because you can't confront her anyway okay. by all standards. So it's best you speak to your spouse, and your spouse will know the best way to channel the issue and to resolve it amicably. So definitely no confrontation. Let your spouse, either way, if it's the husband's spouse, then you know, I mean, the husband's family, then he knows how he's going to talk with his brother or his sister or his mother. And mm. if it's your own family, you know how you will talk to them and they will understand you. Why? Because you're coming from years of being together. Again, talking about the bonding, you share time. So you know their take, you know how they would feel and you know how they would react. So it's best left to the, um, either party, you know, to resolve whatever um, differences that um, may come up at any point in time. Wow, wow. I hope you've enjoyed this episode. Um, this is still Bliss Talk on the Backstage Story Show on Nollywood Radio France. Uh, but before we sign off, I need you to enjoy this sonorous track by McCall, Nothing to Say. And we will be right back on Bliss Talk on the Backstage Story Show on Nollywood Radio France. Yeah, this is still Bliss Talk on the Backstage Story Show on Nollywood Radio France. Now, what general information or what overview, uh, talking about everything we've discussed now, what, what do you have to say about couples and their in-laws to summarize everything? One word, love every person, love every party. Love can do so many amazing things. I keep saying love and it's like, well, how do you love? How do you love? You just love one day at a time. That's <laughs> just it. Respect is something that is key. Respect your in-laws. Make them feel that you value them and take care of them. And when I say take care of them, I mean you take care of them. Let them see you as somebody who is caring. Let them see you as somebody who is part of them. 
don't let them see you as an in-law because an in-law is an outsider. Let them see you as a sister. Let them see you as a friend and be there for them just like you'll be there for your own direct um, sibling. So once you are able to cement that relationship, invariably you're going to drop the in-law kind of relationship and work as brothers and sisters. All right, this is Bliss Talk and you've been listening to the voice of Dr. Mrs. Tony Asmar. She's from Sapele in Delta State and she studied chemistry at the University of Lagos. She also had a second degree in chemistry. Uh, she had a MBA in management from the University of Nigeria, Nsuka. She also studied, uh, she had a doctorate degree in counseling psychology from Evangel University, Monroe, USA. She is an endowment of information. And on this note, I say thank you, Tonya, for this exciting episode. We cannot exhaust this topic, but if you have questions, Tonya, you need to drop your line again. Well, you can reach me on 234-816-654-6231. 234-816-654-6231. And your email? Email tonia.smart at yorkcityltd.com. Tonia.smart at L- yorkcityltd.com. All so right. look forward to hearing from you. look forward to there. hearing from you all over the world. Uh, if you have any questions, you can talk to Tonia. And, you know, on this last note, let me take this quote from Judith Verst. It says, one advantage of marriage is that when you fall out of love with him or he falls out of love with you, it keeps you together until you fall in again. And on that note, I say thank you for staying tuned. This is Bliss Talk. And until I meet you again on the next episode of Bliss Talk, this is Demola Sonyaolu saying, keep well, do well, and stay atop your game. I end with this uh, continuity from Mikol. Nothing to say. Bye for now. <laughs>